Hi there. In our last tip, we looked at bundles of wires using the sweep nerves object, and it was a really simple approach, but I think I can do better. I actually stumbled upon a different tutorial that I'll link in the description that gave me the inspiration for this. Now, this five minute tip may actually last a bit longer than five minutes, so bear with me. In the last tip, we actually looked at creating a bundle of wires using the sweep nerves object and twisting it. This time, we're going to create it using more traditional means, but we're actually going to add pieces of tape holding the wire together at certain intervals. Then we're going to drape the wire up this ledge. And so I'm going to show you a few different ways to do that. Uh, we need to get started by creating our bundle of wires. And I said we're going to do this with a more traditional means. So we're actually going to create a series of uh, cylinders to create our wires. So what we do is we just create one cylinder like this. And then we're just going to create a few other cylinders, maybe slightly varying sizes. that goes with the bundle. Now these cylinders can be any width, any thickness for this technique, it doesn't matter, but they do all need to be the same height. And the cool thing about this technique is that these wires can actually be uh, different colors. You can apply an independent material to each one of these wires using this technique. So it's a bit more versatile than the technique that I used before. So I'm still just creating a few different sizes of wire here. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's create a few materials really quickly. Let's just do three different colors. Let's do sort of an orange, uh, a dark green, and a yellow. So yellow, green, orange, maybe orange is the important wire. There's only one orange. And there's a couple yellows and greens in here. Maybe there's two orange wires. Okay, so now we have a length of wire. Now we will be twisting these wires together similarly to the last tutorial, so they're going to need some subdivisions. I can also group them together at this point. So what we can do is select all the cylinders and change the number of height segments. Switch to edge mode so we can see this. So I'm going to create quite a few height segments and the rotation segments I can comfortably reduce to 12 or so. 12 is my favorite number for rotation segments of a cylinder. So now we can take these wires and sort of lay them in front of this ledge where we know we want to drape them. Again, it's not very important that the cable is the right length for this demonstration, but if we wanted to, we could increase the height. Now, we have this bunch of wires. The next thing we want to do with it is that we want to twist these wires together. So we grab a twist deformer, and we can just put it in the null object where all these wires are bunched together, put its position to zero, and its rotation to zero, and then we rotate the twist object so that the little orange handle is in line with the bundle of wires. This is important because as we twist the wires, we want it to twist along the axis that you're seeing right here. Now, we just twisted the wires, but we need to tell the twist object to operate in an un unlimited mode if we want to twist the entire length. So here, we've actually created some twisted wires and they have different materials. So that's a bit of a step up from the last tutorial already. Now, what about taping these wires together? And this is the trick. What we can actually do is that we can create another cylinder. So I just created a cylinder and I'm going to move it into the null object. Well, I can't move it into that one because it's being twisted. But perhaps we can use the transfer tool. Let's see, I always forget where this is because I don't have my shortcuts. Okay. It's not important that we're very accurate. We can just move it around. 
I'll figure out my shortcuts later on. So what we're going to do is set this to X so that it's in line with it. And this is going to be our tape. So I'm going to go to the side view and we're going to place the tape inside of the bundle of wires. And I'll show you why we're doing that. We're going to use one of the new deformers in R13 and R14 called the collision deformer. So I'm going to turn caps off. So let's just pretend this is a band of tape. All right, we need to add maybe a few height subdivisions to it. And now we have some tape. We need to make the tape stick to the wires if the wire is taped together along the length. So we can actually use the collision deformer for this. So we go up to the menu here and we grab the collision deformer. So the way the collision deformer works is you tell it what to deform and then you say collide with this object. It's easier to show you than explain it. So I've just put this cylinder into a null object. Let's give this cylinder a nice black material like tape would have. So we've put that cylinder into a null object and then we have a collision deformer. We can put our collision deformer in that object along with it and then say collide with this bunch of twisted wires. So we can select that and under colliders we can add the bunch of twisted wires. Now nothing's really happened yet because we need to tweak the settings a bit. In the collision deformer we can change the mode to inside stretch. And what that's going to do is if the cylinder gets small enough it's basically going to stretch the cylinder around the bunch of wires. So right there, it's almost as if we've taped the wires together. Now, we can tweak these settings even more. For instance, we can make the cylinder longer for a longer piece of tape. And it looks like we have a bit of a gap there. That gap can actually be adjusted. If we go to the advanced options, we can adjust the size parameter, I believe. Sometimes it doesn't update right away. But there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that you can adjust but you can see as I slide it along the wire it actually collides with it and there's that buffer so I believe this is the size of it you can adjust the stretch factor the relax factor so if we make it relax more it's it's like it's strapped on tighter um, maybe we change the mode to just inside instead of inside stretch no they're both pretty much the same Let's see, if we change the size to 0.1 and play with the stiffness setting or the structural setting. You can see that we're sort of making little adjustments there. But the collision deformer does not always update right away. That's one thing to be aware. There we go, see? So now that I've adjusted my settings and moved it, my settings sort of took effect. So now it's, it's, it looks like it's wrapped pretty tightly. Let's loosen that up a bit. So instead of 0.1, let's do 0.3 inches. And then maybe if we move it, yeah, there we go. So there's a bit of a gap here because we need that gap. We don't want intersecting intersecting stuff. So I'm going to make this 0.25 and then we can move it and we see it's a little bit closer. So the cool thing is that once we have this set up we can basically take this piece of tape and just copy it along the object and as we make more copies we are actually just taping the wire up at those sections. And I can go to each one of these sections and it's taped tightly in a different shape. So I thought this was really, really cool and a nice use for this. Now, the reason I'm doing all of this on a straight line is because I kind of have to. The way the, uh, the way the collision deformer works, if I were to bend this around into a circle, these straps would, would always go as far out as they possibly can. So basically, to make a long story short, it kind of glitches and it looks really bad. So now that we have this, and again, because of the, the, the issue I just mentioned, we actually have to uh, convert them to editable objects now. So I'm going to select these, right-click, and say Current State to Object. 
and then I'm going to grab the ones that are still selected and delete them because we don't need them for now. So what we have now is a bunch of geometry, cylinders that are twisted that we can then still texture and we have all of these straps. Now we can group these two objects into one and call it cable and then we can create a spline. Now this spline is going to be the spline that goes from the top level to the bottom level. So we're just going to create a B spline and I'm just going to make it come from the top and then it's going to drop down to the bottom and maybe snake off to the side. So what I would need to do now is select these points right here and well, I had my levels mixed up. This is actually the top level. So what we do now is we take these points and put them up on top here and at this point I'm not going to spend too much time making it look perfect but basically that's how our that's how our cable comes off the edge. So now how do we make this straight length of wire fit along this path of our cable draping down the side of our installation whatever this is. Well there's another really cool deformer called a spline wrap deformer. Really simply all you need is one object and a spline and you can use it. So under deformers we choose spline wrap. The way this one works is you place the spline wrap object in the cable because we want to we want to wrap the cable cable along the spline. And then with the spline wrap object selected, we drag the spline into the spline property. And just like that, we have the cable. So now we can go in and actually tweak our spline a little bit so that the transition is a bit smoother. We can select the points down here on the bottom and move it so it doesn't intersect the ground as much. Or at all. You can, you can make it so it doesn't intersect the ground at all if you want to be that precise. And in essence what we have right here is we have a cable made up of different bits of wire that are all twisted together very slightly and then they're actually all strapped together using bits of tape. Um, you know, I can, I can think of a lot of projects I've done in the past where something like this would have been really useful, but I only recently, uh, recently thought of doing it this way. So again, this wasn't really a five minute tip, more like a 10 minute tip. And um, I, hope, I hope you guys find this useful. This is sort of an expansion on the last tip where we did this in a much more simple way. So if you like this tip, make sure to check out the uh, previous tip I did, which, which is actually more about five minutes long, unlike this one, which is, uh, which is pretty lengthy. And I'm just making it lengthier and lengthier by chatting about the length. <laughs> so I would love to hear your feedback on this one. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. Until next time. See ya.